Alright. What's missing? A Roman, a Roman. What are the tastes? Sour. 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 Sweet. Uh, bitter. Umami. Umami. Exactly what we just Can it be different? The aroma? Like what I taste and what he tastes, what he tastes. That's exactly what he tastes. And that's why it's in your head. I'm sure if we all look at this color, we all see a different shade of blue too, but I'm not going to get into physics with you. <clears throat> this is based on your experiences. If you grew up and never smelled a rose, and I put a rose underneath your nose and blindfolded you. What might you think you smell? Flower. You might say flower. You could say floral. You might say shampoo or soap. Many shampoos and soaps have floral aromas. Perfumes have floral aromas. I don't know what you're going to say. But maybe. But if you've never smelled that aroma before, you grew up in... I don't know, the Sub-Saharan Desert didn't smell much greenery for your whole life. I don't know how many aromas you could identify. So that's in your head. <clears throat> if I took those three people to the Middle East, and I don't care what country, pick any of them over there. And one person said floral, and one said soap, and one said rose. And then we went to the Middle East and we had dinner. And person one says, this dish tastes like soap. Person two says, I don't get that. To me, it's kind of floral. Person three knows the ingredient. What is it? Huh? That's why right now. Popular all over the place. Over there. If you ever eat baklava, next time you eat it, get past the honey and get past the sweetness, and you'll taste the rose water or orange water. You might get the aroma of walnuts or pistachios, depending on which country it was made. But once you taste rose water, you can't oh, untaste it. Once you taste orange blossom water, you can't untaste it. Now, <clears throat> an example that I use in every class what I constantly find in my hand and in my mouth Coffee. is the aroma. Mm. Coffee. Bitter is not an aroma. What's the taste? Bitter. <coughs> bitter. You think coffee is anything but bitter? Please explain to me. So bitter taste plus this coffee aroma equals my coffee. I know, backwards and forwards. Now, maybe if I put a blindfold on my kids when they were really young and teaching them aromas and made them smell, they would say coffee. With a more developed palate, what are some other flavonoids or aromas that may be in that cup? Cocoa. Cocoa, very popular. Caramel. Could be. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. What? Cinnamon. Um, cinnamon is that I usually I've added. I've never smelled cinnamon on coffee, but it may. Fruity. Could be fruity, depending on the type of beans. It could be burnt, depending on the roast. Maybe you've had like a really dark espresso or Turkish roast. Um, vanilla is a popular flavonoid you could detect yes. in this coffee. Bourbon, coffee. nutty. You might just get hurt. Mm. I can't tell you what you taste or what you smell, but all these flavonoids combine to make coffee. If you grew up in China 20 years ago, and I blindfolded you and put this on under your nose, you might have no idea because you've never smelled coffee. Before. Starbucks has opened so many Starbucks in China, they're pretty adept at knowing coffee now, in addition to tea. 
But if you put some T's under people's nose, they're like, I don't know, what the hell is that? Dirt water? Compost? What is that? <clears throat> I don't get it. So this plus this equals my flavor. Now let's say I was younger and I added cream and sugar to it. Does it change the taste? Yes. What does it change? It could be sweet or it also could be less bitter. What else? Does the aroma change? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what does sugar smell like? That's cream. Sugar smell like sugar, but yeah. cream. <laughs> Okay. You're a shit coffee member. <laughs> if you can smell cream over coffee. Oh, well, cream is happy. Do they drink much coffee in Brazil? Yeah. yeah. Like Colombia? But they all like coffee with sugar. I personally grew up without sugar, any sugar. But to me, I don't think it changes the aroma. There are very few people who can smell coffee and then put cream and sugar in it and put it under the nose and all of a sudden they're like, oh, that's no longer coffee. No. The coffee aroma Fair. is still there. The flavor changes. It comes Dunkin' Donuts dishwater. It's just like, what did you do? <laughs> so that's what changes, the flavor, not the aroma. <clears throat> so that's a fix not knowing certain aromas taste everything else. What's that? You said it's experience aroma. Yeah, that's what's experience. in your head. I don't know. So it's a fix that you taste you know, improve your palate. So I think I told you I used to do it with my kids in the garden. It was blindfolded until they could identify every single smell from every leaf that I rub under their nose. Their palates are like wicked now. It's like crazy. I fear coming from my own children. <laughs> There's nothing they can't detect. So when we like our, you know, okay, do we understand this one? Yes. Okay, now I'm going to go a little deeper. Let's say. Is the taste sour. sour? Sour, very good. Why is it sour? Because of the acid. 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 What is the flavor? Sour, sweet. Citrus. I'm just going to say lemon juice. <laughs> if I drink lemon juice, I know that flavor is lemon juice. It doesn't taste like anything but lemon juice to me. I hate to say citrus because citrus includes oranges and and limes and citrons and Buddha hands and I mean so many other fruits. But yes, it has a citrus like aroma. But if you really want to be honest, the aroma is like pearl wines. If I added what happens to the taste? It turns sweet. Turns sweet or less acidic. What's the flavor now? No, no, no. There you go. I knew one of you out of 13 should be able to get it. Lemonade. If you've never had lemonade, you wouldn't know what it, the flavor is. But to me, sugar plus lemon juice tastes like lemonade. What else balances out acid? Salt. Salt. Sugar. What else balances out sugar? Uh, or salt. acid? Salt. Salt. So you could also add salt to that and neutralize the acid and come to sweeter or less bitter. If you doubt that, watch someone put salt on a grapefruit, watermelon, or even put a couple of other. In Brazil, we, we eat uh, lime with salt. It totally really neutralizes the acidity. You can put a couple of grains of kosher salt in your coffee, it won't make it sweet, but it'll be less acidic and bitter. It'll fire up. Same with pineapple. Yeah. Because you're neutralizing all that acid. Really so good these are things that when, yeah. when you over season something in fundamentals and they say they add acid, it's not because they want to taste the lemon juice. They want to neutralize the salt. Or maybe when your chef said add salt, I love when I teach fundamentals. Actually, I hate it when I cheat myself in the eye. <laughs> <I hate it. clears throat> um, I was like, yeah, you old people are all allergic to it. You don't know what food tastes like without salt. No, maybe your food's too acidic and you need to balance that. Ask why you needed more salt. Maybe you brought it up to the chef and it just didn't have any flavor in your recipe and you needed to draw it out. 
those things also dilate your taste buds, so flavor goes deeper into it. Okay, so now we're getting a little deeper. If we understand taste and aroma, that's part of the equation. Because tomorrow we have a lot of stuff to taste through. And if you don't understand these words and I hear anything other than what I want to hear, I'm going to be confused. Consistency versus texture. We'll do this visually. Is a consistency. Soft. 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 If you don't understand that, it's in the name, it's called soft serve. What's the consistency? Firm. Firm. I would call it hard because here in America we call it hard pack ice cream. And gelato, I call soft serve or semi firm. What is the texture of all three of those items? Soft. Creamy. Creamy or smooth? Not soft, soft is a consistency. Soft, it's impossible to be a soft texture. <clears throat> How would I change the texture without changing the consistency? Adding Such as? So now this is soft with chunks. With a crunchy texture. Semi soft with a crunchy texture, hard with a crunchy texture. Now the item. <laughs> If this is a topping and that's ice cream, the topping itself also has a consistency, but it changes the texture. It's no longer an even texture. For example, on fundamentals, one day, I don't know what day it is anymore, you all attempted to make risotto. I was unqualified that with the I'm very particular about risotto. Some of you made it too soft and it ran all over. And some of you made it so firm you could set bricks with it. And some of you made it just right. Wow. So independent of the consistency of it, what was the texture in all 13 of your risottos from? Rice. The rice. Very good. If I made oatmeal, what's the texture from? So there's a difference between consistency and texture. Think of about consistency, it's like your mattress. Okay? like really soft ones, some like really firm, some like in between. There's that company sleep number because everyone's a pain in the ass and wants a different consistency. So this affects your food. The taste affects your foods. Those oysters tended to be mm, semi-soft. I wouldn't put them anywhere near as soft as soft serve ice cream. All three of those items, what's your own? Holy shit, are you soft. kidding me? Vanilla. My, uh, Vanilla. Vanilla. What's the taste? Sweet. There you go. What's the flavor? It's vanilla. Ice cream. There's the aroma. Hopefully, your ice cream's sweet. It can be savory. I made many savory ice creams. Many. Asparagus ice cream is really good. Hmm? Asparagus ice cream is really good. Yeah, I imagine. If you like asparagus. <laughs> This is usually the time of year I would take all my extra pumpkin soup and butter and soup and run it through my ice cream maker for a savory course. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Okay, now, <clears throat> balance is something we all see. When you are young, what taste are you drawn to the most? Sweet. Sweet. You don't get that. Lactose, milk sugar. You're drawn to it. That's why young kids have a tolerance for sugar, but nothing else in the world. When I was young, I could like, God, remember, like eat sugary cereal and still put a spoonful of sugar on the top. We love sweet. It's what we're drawn to. If it wasn't, we'd probably starve to death as infants or little baby animals, which are drawn to the lactose in the milk. <clears throat> As you get older, you become less tolerant of it or don't, you're not as drawn to it. I think alcohol companies do the best job of marketing 
to young people's palates to get them to start drinking younger. Just look at companies like Mike's Hard Lemonade. Shit is off at the company. What self-respecting adult wants to drink a cup full of sugar like that? Twisted tea, like, good God. White claw, white trash, whatever you call it. Like, white trash. God damn, that stuff is off. If you think about a mixed cocktail, you may have in the summertime in Spain or maybe parts Some of America, beer. gin and tonic, and a lot of tonic when you're young. And as you get older, less and less tonic, gin martinis. <laughs> vodka and cranberry, or vodka and orange juice. Eventually less and less juice, and eventually a vodka martini. Jack and Coke, less and less Coke, eventually bourbon on the rocks, and if you're real badass, you go bourbon neat. That's, that's the stuff. Um, but it's your nice, palate, nice, when you're nice. really young, can't handle it. I'll never forget the first time my parents left me alone to watch my brother. They went out for the weekend, and I'd be good, don't screw up. I'm the man of the house. Like my father, he wasn't a big drinker. He would drink the occasional Heineken, the occasional vodka and soda, and the occasional Chivas Regal. I'm like, ah, oh, well, scotch. I swear to Christ, I put it in my mouth, I spit it so far across the dining room table. <laughs> I thought he was testing me and put gas in the bottom. Oh, <laughs> what in Christ's name is it? But I realized, like, my palate was way too underdeveloped to appreciate that. You have to work up to things. Right? Your palate changes every day. What you didn't like today, you might like tomorrow. Why? Because there may be cortisol in your body today and that affects your taste buds. There may be something you ate for breakfast that's still affecting your taste buds. It may be something you've never experienced before, still affecting your taste buds. Your taste changed throughout your whole life. Any of you can name foods that you couldn't stand as a kid? To me, your taste was relative, but when you were younger? Asparagus. Yeah, when I was younger, asparagus, blue cheese, and olives. I thought it was a trifecta from the devil and stuff. Like, who in Christ's name would put this in their mouth? I didn't like olives I was in my mid-twenties living in the Mediterranean. Because I always thought they were just black things that came out of a can. In the 70s, there weren't too many examples of good olives. Now, you go to a grocery store, there's 42 different types of olives at Adam's grocery store. Just like, Jesus. How many different aromas? Jesus. Same thing. So, <clears throat> you might not have liked the oysters today. Don't write them off forever. You might grow to like them. The oysters are very, for most of you, Salty, how do you neutralize salt? Acid. Acid. So you may see some people squeezing a little lime or lemon. Squeeze a lemon in there. The acid brings the salt the vinegar. or the alkaline to base and neutralize. Some people put mignonette, vinegar, mignon pepper, orange, and herbs. Could be champagne vinegar, could be white wine vinegar, red wine vinegar, could be anything. Rice wine vinegar, the acid neutralizes. Once the acid neutralizes the salt, then you have to be careful because now you're introducing a new aroma to the dish, which you may or may not want. I used to make my students uh, do a vinegar tasting. It would be 30 vinegars, and they'd walk in like, oh my, I would put all that, like, look at your face. But what I would do is take those little white sugar cubes and they would soak up the vinegar in the sugar cube and suck the vinegar out of it. Sugars and alkaline would neutralize the acid, and they feel the aroma of that vinegar go across their palate. That's and nice. that's what will be left behind. So to me, that making igloos in elementary school would be only used for sugar cubes, but I digress. Now, balance is something we all want. So I'm going to give you a mandolin and a pile of Granny Smith apples. I tell you to slice them for me. And on your cutting board, you have a pile of Granny Smith apples. What is the taste? Sweet, sour, sour. 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 If you've ever eaten a Granny Smith apple, you would know that they're sometimes called sour green apples. What is the aroma? Um, what did you say? Green apple specifically. Melolatic acid. If you get anything other than green apple out of a green apple, like I said, it's in your head. <coughs> I smell green apple, I can definitely tell you the difference between white, between that and red apple. 
very distinct. Jolly Rancher, one of the finest flavor enhancers in the world. This grant is a little over the top. It's like they mail the sour to the house. You can smell it. So what is the sourness caused by? Oh, it's no different than before. So you have a pile of sour green apples on your cutting board. What can I sprinkle on top of those apples to make them less sour? Lemon. Salt. I'd go with salt. Salt or You're adding sugar. Acid alkaline. Acid. You're not so let's less. use some sugar, and that will neutralize that acid. Just like the sugar cubes in the vinegar. What is the consistency? Uh, that's a, that's a firm. Firm and it's kind of green. You can feel all the cellulose and pectin or uh, cell walls in your cup. Firm consistency. That's why we need vitamin in here. Delicious. Now, if I put heat to plant protein or cells, what's going to happen to the consistency? It's going to get It's going to get soft. Now they're soft and fairly sweet. How do you balance soft? Oh, crunch. crunch. So I would do the crust. One line. The crust balances the soft. But now we have natural sugars in the apples plus additional sugar. So it may get too sweet. What's a nice way to balance sweet? Uh, but such, such as cream, a pinch of cream. Oh. Put salt in your crust if you're good. Oh, that's good. Now, let's say that you take this out of the oven and it's ripping hot. The best way to balance hot is ice cream. Cool, whether it's whipped cream or ice cream. Also, whipped cream and ice cream in their simplest forms are what? Milk. Dairy and dairy is a milk. Of the three macro ingredients, what's dairy? It's fat. Oh. Any of you from the Midwest? Kind of. Well, you might have to go over one more state. Wisconsin. You're the Mideast. You're like right on that fine line. If you go a little further over to Wisconsin, You'll see them put, they'll make apple pie and they'll do like cheddar cheese on it. The cheese is fat. The fat balances out the acid. If you go to parts of Pennsylvania where the Germans settled, they call them Pennsylvania Deutsch, they'll layer sour cream in their apple pie and then it bakes. And all that fat balances out the acidity. It's really that super special. So, when you see people doing something, it probably started off, necessity is the mother of all inventions. Someone at some point realized, oh, this is acidic, how do I cut? Well, we live in the Midwest, we're surrounded by cows, let's use their fat, the fat cuts it. How do we know it cuts it? Well, the cream in my coffee cuts the fat in my coffee. Somewhere along the line, someone figured this out. Someone, figured out if you drop some acid into an oyster, you cut the salinity. So, like all of this is, I hate to say research, it could be tradition, but most traditions start from meat. So, when you're building a dish, it's too acidic, how do I balance it? It's too soft, how do I fix it? Here, it's full, right? Today, for, oh my God, today is the 31st? Today is the only day the odds of you having this lecture today? Happy Sunheim. Spooky. Huh? Happy Sunheim. Let's say you do a 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock plating, starch vegetable protein. And you do sweet potato puree, roasted butternut squash, King salmon. Bait roast or whatever. What is the problem with that dish? Two similar consistencies. The consistency is all the same. Soft, soft, soft. What did you say? Monochromatic. Wrong monochromatic. 
and I have said every day for 18 years in this lecture, I've never felt on Halloween before. If I was doing a special on Halloween, I might want to do a monochromatic study in orange. <laughs> It is soft, soft, and soft. When could that be okay? You want to make a stupid amount of money and work ridiculously easy hours? Go work in a nursing home or a retirement center. People with who don't have the ability to eat hard foods. Soft, soft, and soft. So it may work. If you're born eating soft foods, you die eating soft foods. Enjoy the firmness now. Ain't too many people with 85, 90 year old jaw lines that I know that can handle eating a lobster tail or ribeye. It's just too hard for them. It may crack their teeth, actually. So that may not work. Or let's do converse, so we'll do a spring plate and see what we got. Because you said this was too monochromatic. And I'll agree with you. Let's say it's spring in the Hudson Valley, and you have the world's most perfect. A grade baby bliss potatoes because we live here and we get them and they're awesome. And then perhaps for a vegetable, we'll do Asparagus. thumbelina carrots, baby turnips, baby beets, and maybe, I don't know, because I just had Vietnamese food, maybe some Vietnamese inspired. Pork meatballs. Now I've got way too many colors on the plate for some people. Three different consistencies, many different textures, right? These will be smooth, these will be fibrous, these may be slightly stringy, depending on the vegetables. What's out of balance? The vegetables. Unless, what if you were doing an art gallery opening and the artist did everything in spheres and you wanted to do mimic what the artist it may work I've done that I had to do it at an art gallery opening every single order of it right down to the sphere five caviar vegetable juice oh. looked cool servers hated me <laughs> carrying a plate of marbles I didn't tell them they had to look so as human beings, we seek balance. If you think of what your favorite thing is to eat, I bet you I could break it down into its simplest form and it's going to be in balance. When I taught at Greystone in California, 2011, I to think about that. 2011, I'm in Greystone, St. Helena, Napa Valley, our smaller campus. And there was a bar slash pizzeria that I'd go to after work because I'd use a lot of the staff members that were called the No Tree. The No Tree is in downtown Napa, a really nice place. And on the counter, they had a machine about this big. Little tiny soft serve ice cream. And when they put the checks on the table, every single person got a little portion cup of vanilla ice cream with salted caramel. And I would sit there night after night after night just listening to people lose their minds about how this was the greatest thing ever. Now mind you, 19, to, no, 2011, I'm 41. So I've been around the block already. I'm like, what the hell are these people talking about? Why is it so fascinating to me? And next thing you know, there's salted caramel truffles and salted caramel ice cream and salted caramel milkshakes and salted caramel everything. I'm like, this is not new. It brought me back to my youth when one of my favorite candy bars was a payday. And why did I have paydays? Well, there's sweet caramel with salted peanuts. Not too sweet, not too salty. There's texture, smooth caramel crunch, with the crunch mixed in. Consistency, soft caramel with hard nuts. Everything in that little stinking wrapper is in balance. But people forgot about that, and all of a sudden, salted caramel became huge. So think about everything you like and dissect it into what are the tastes, what are the aroma. You're not putting a clean sheet pan on a dirty floor, are you? Jesus Christ. That's disgusting. 
picked it up with you. It's how you do anything, it's how you do anything. So I want you, when you're eating lunch, when you're eating dinner, when you're eating breakfast, what do I like about this? How do I recreate it? 90% of the time, when y'all are eating, you're like, I wish I could make this again at home. The thing that you can't figure out are the aromas. You probably know what the protein is, because for shit, you ordered it. You probably know the cooking method. There may be grill marks on it. Tough to get those in a saute pan. Or maybe set it on the menu. It may say XYZ in a roasted tomato sauce, but it didn't list all the aromatics in it. What are the aromas? Oh, it tastes a little bit of garlic, but it's not so pungent. Maybe it's a little sweeter, so maybe they roasted it. This tomato sauce isn't acidic. Well, they balance it with either salt or sugar. But it's not sweet, so I'm gonna go with salt. Ooh, there's a smokiness in there. Well, what's the smoke from? Smoked paprika, Bacon. black pepper, white pepper, God knows what. So maybe they smoke the tomatoes. Maybe they put pancetta or bacon in there and the smoke came from that. Those are the things you are having challenges with. How do I remake it? Because you don't know what you don't know and you're a victim of your age. So the more you pay attention while you're eating, and very few people do this on campus, I give this lecture to the <laughs> section. Next block I get to do this three times. Block after that, four times. And I will still go up to someone five months after they're done in my class. What's the taste of that dish? And they're like, tomato in me. <laughs> <laughs> this school is gonna graduate 2,000 people this year. To which that person will hear me repeat to them, you want to be number one, you want to be 2,000. You might be happy to be 1999. I'll ask. Woo! -hoo. So start paying attention to everything. Because you might have a dish at a restaurant that you really like, or you want to recreate, or maybe you understand completely how they made it. And you're like, oh, it's just too salty for me. Well, maybe it needs acid. What kind of acid? Well, I'd go for a neutral acid. Maybe I want something floral. Maybe I want something wine and earthy. Maybe I want something straight up in your face. Like, I'm gonna, I don't know, pickle habaneros and then use that acid. It's got the aroma of habaneros, it's got the heat of habanero, it's got the acid. Like, these are the little things. This is what separates you. I want all of you honestly, to understand that you have a distinctive timeline in your life. And you have, for lack of better word, skill. Ideally, I don't care if these are days, months, years, ideally, you should get that. That's straight line growth. This person here is no better. That's a complete even growth line, which is fair in the beginning. But what I want you to strive for is I call it hockey stick growth or exponential growth. Obviously, you should start off getting better every day. But when the certain things click like, oh, I get how to balance it. Ooh, I jump higher than the person who's just grinding it out. Oh, I understand why I'm doing this knife cut. I'm not doing it just because I was told to. Bam, got a little bit higher exponentially than the next one. You understand it? This is education. This is training. I can make a monkey cook as well as I do. They don't know what they're doing. They're just mimicking, mimicking my steps. They're very good at training primates to mimic sex. The monkey will not know how to fix a holiday. They may know how to fix a holiday sauce. They don't know why, why the steps are doing this, fixing what they're fixing. They don't realize the coalescence of fat happened because it came out of phase and there's too much fat in the protein trunk. How do I stretch protein? Protein's mainly water. Let me add a little water. That's education. And that's this. This is okay, but this is painful. By this point in time, if you want to be here, cool. We're definitely better than here. 
but you're not here. I'd rather be here. So when I get on your end, like, I wake up, pay attention. Why are you doing with this? And I ask these questions, not just to stick it to you or show you how little you know. It's like to get you to think, why am I doing this? Could I also do it another way? That's also an education. How many different ways can I get to that spot? Not that I've seen, but because I understand why you are taking it. All right, so tomorrow we've got these two tastings. Crustaceans, uh, shrimp, crab, lobster, crayfish. Caviar, I don't know, I didn't look at the lock-in, but I'm gonna guess probably um, five sturgeon, two white, two trout. Fourteen different caviars. Fourteen different types of row, I should say. About fourteen. Plus cure and smoke items. I don't think this will take us that long. So this will help you more. You guys can get here tomorrow at. Any questions? Yes. 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 Yes.